Happy Halloween guys! So as you can see today's tutorial is on the Hellraiser look. This really is quite the transformation so if you're looking to replicate this look then set aside a good few hours and do some prep in advance to make the nails because you're going to need them. So my model today is Jack and much like last week we're going to apply a bald cap again so I'm just going to include the footage from last week on how I applied the bald cap. As I mentioned last week I do have an in-depth tutorial on how to apply a vinyl bald cap. This includes gluing it around the ears, around the nape of the neck, how to blend away the edges. It's a really in-depth tutorial. The only difference between the ball cap that I applied last week and the one that I've actually applied to Jack today is the one that I'm showing you on screen is a clear ball cap and the one that I applied today is a flesh coloured ball cap. It makes absolutely no difference which one you use. If you don't want to have to cover the hair too much then a flesh coloured one is really good because it's more opaque. And I would say that the flesh coloured ones are a little bit thicker because it does contain a pigment. But when I say thicker, I really mean marginally different. They really are both extremely thin, but you just can notice that it's a tiny weeny bit thicker when it's got a little bit of pigment to it. So really, it is just your personal preference. I don't mind using either one. It doesn't faze me. I'm quite happy with a clear bald cap and I'm quite happy with a flesh coloured one. I should also mention that when I say flesh colour, you can get different tones of flesh colour. You can get deep and you can get very fair. You can also make your own, you would just put in the pigment colour of your choice. So next up I want to cover the brows and I want them to be really really invisible. So I'm going to start with the Elmer's glue. This one is the non-toxic one, everybody uses it because it's super easy to work with. You just work it into the brows and then you use a spoolie to brush the brows up and this is going to make them as thin as possible and as flat as possible to your skin. It does come out purple to begin with but it does dry clear. And what's great about this is it's really easy to remove. You just use some mild soap and warm water and it will break down the glue and it will just easily come away from your brows. So I'm applying one layer on the brow, moving over to the other brow while that dries, coming back doing a second layer and then I'm going to show you a little technique to almost kind of disguise the texture of the eyebrows. I'm not going to stop there, I'm actually going to take it one step further. So if you have some excess vinyl from your bald cap, keep it because you are going to need it for in a little while. So once you've applied two layers to both the brows and they've dried, you'll still find that if you were to run your finger over the brow, there's some texture there. So a little tip is to use your spatula to decant thicker amounts of glue and we're going to smooth that over the eyebrow it's going to fill in the tiny gaps between each of the hairs so that we get a smoother finish overall and it will start to disguise the texture. Now again, it will look purple, but I promise you if you give it time, it will start to dry clear. Another great thing about this product is it really is cheap as chips. It's a lot more cost effective than using a special effects wax and I would say it's a little bit easier to work with. If you do get it onto the skin, you can simply wipe it away with a baby wipe or some micellar water on a cotton bud. Now, as I said, I am gonna take this one step further. And the reason for this is because I actually want the smoothest finish possible. So I'm taking some of the bald cap that was left over from the nape of the neck. And this area is super thin because it actually doesn't contain any of the pigment. So I'm taking some Prosade, which I used to glue the ball cap on, and I'm running that around the circumference of Jack's eyebrows. Now it doesn't matter if you do get this on the brow hair because it will come off. The hair is now protected by the Elmer's glue, but I would say it's always a good idea to have a proper glue remover just in case. So now the Prosade's gone completely translucent, I'm ready to apply the bald caps. The idea is to keep this as nice and taut as possible. So stretch it out using your fingers, ask somebody for an extra hand if you need to. And this is going to give you a super smooth and realistic bald brow finish. And because it is a vinyl bald cap, it's going to blend away to nothing. So it will really give the most seamless finish to the skin as well. You could apply this directly over the brow with none of the Elmer's glue in there, but you will still see a bit of a bulky brow. They do need to be flat to the skin in order to achieve this finish. So if you went and watched the ball cap tutorial first, you know I'm using acetone to blend away the seams and I'm using a rolling technique with a cotton bud to really flatten the edges to the skin. Obviously, as we are using acetone, you need to be super careful around the eyes. If you're doing it on yourself or anybody else, make sure you do a patch test first because it could irritate sensitive skin. I'm really using the most minimal amount in order to blend these edges. 
I'm going to use my Makeup Forever Flash Palette to do the bulk of the colouring because it's super opaque and it's a quick way to cover. You can do this with alcohol activated paints, which you can actually layer with the cream for durability. It's completely up to you. I worked out pretty quick that this tutorial was going to take me a while and I had picked out a palette from the Makeup Armoury that I wanted to use for the colours but because the alcohol activated paints tend to work a bit better if you're using them like a watercolour you would apply thin layers to build up the tones which you've seen me do a number of times in different looks but for this particular look, for the bulk of it I really needed to get the colour on so I decided to go for the cream but bear in mind that cream alone can start to move if you get quite warm or if you touch it too much if you really do want durability then the alcohol activated paints or Pax paints are very very good I've mostly used white with a tiny hint of the blue from that flash palette to get this tone this is just the foundation we're going to work on top of this with different eyeshadows and different colours but this is a really good starting base colour it's like an off white with a hint of blue so cover the eyes and don't forget to get as much of the ears as possible can we just appreciate how good the brows look with the Elmer's glue underneath to really flatten the hairs and then having the vinyl ball cap over the top of them, they are completely and utterly seamless. That's one layer down. I'm now going to set that in place with the Vichy Derma Blend. When using creams, it's a good idea to do a bit of layering. So press your powder in and you can go in with a second layer of cream, but you do need to have a light hand because you can disturb the base, or you can go with an airbrush. My preference would be to airbrush over this, but I know not all of you have one. So I'm just going to go in with a second layer of cream. This time I've added a small amount of the Krylon Supra Colour because it is slightly thicker. And now I'm adding another layer of powder. Next I'm moving on to two palettes. They are both alcohol activated palettes, again because they have durability. They are both from the Makeup Armoury. And I'm predominantly using the blue in the middle of this palette with a tiny bit of white from the smaller palette and I'm being super careful to apply this around the eyes. Now you really do have to be extremely careful, but this is a good way to add some longevity to the eye makeup. It doesn't work too well on Jack because he keeps opening his eyes up while it's wet. However, for this particular look, it doesn't matter too much because having that kind of messy feel to the eyes really works quite well. But if you do want something more seamless, make sure it's completely dry before you open your eyes. Underneath Jack's eyes, I'm applying the same cream that I've applied to the rest of the face and then I'm going to set that in place with the powder. Jack is an absolute girl when it comes to applying makeup underneath his eyes. It's a real nightmare to get underneath, so just be really patient if you're working on somebody else. Get them to look up and allow them some breathing and blinking time. I'm going to use some of the red from the alcohol activated paints and I'm going to start mapping out the line work. When you look at the reference images, the lines are not dead straight. So I ruled out the idea of using a tape measure to give me straight lines because I feel like it would have been too perfect. So don't worry too much if you've got wibbly wobbly lines. When you look at the reference images, it's almost like the skin has been jaggedly cut into these shapes. I think it really only does you a favor when they're not totally perfect. When you look at the reference image, you'll see that there aren't any lines around the actual eyes. They are predominantly on the forehead and on the rest of the face below the eye socket. They are also not around the ears. They actually stop about an inch away from the ears all the way around. So I'm going to paint the rest of the lines on the face and then I'll be back when I have something else to explain. So now I've got the line work done, I'm going to start colouring in, I'm going to use two of these palettes from Certify, I pull these out every single Halloween because they are fantastic. 
I'm starting with a matte blue shade called Atlantic and I'm applying this around the whole eye socket on the lid and underneath the lower eyelashes. I'll also be deepening this later but for now I'm adding a base colour down and I'll come and finish these off towards the end of the tutorial. When you look at the reference images of Pinhead, you can see that his actual skin tone is predominantly one that looks like a kind of bluish bone colour, but when you actually look at the colours, he has a lot of yellow in there, he has blue and some grey tones. So I'm going to start off by taking the Sunray Yellow, which is a matte yellow eyeshadow, and I'm using a dab in motion to press this on around the outside areas of these squares. You really do not have to be too neat about this. Trust me, once you get to the end, it'll be really, really effective. So I'm now going in with a grey toned eyeshadow. This one is called Typhoon. It's also a matte finish and I'm taking the majority of the colour off and then putting it onto the back of my hand before tapping it onto the squares. I've also mixed it with a very, very tiny amount of the shade Coast, which is a mid-tone pale blue. And I'm also taking that around the eyes. This is like a work in progress. I'll just be sort of flitting around the whole face with these tones. Once I've laid those colours down, I will be blending over them with a small amount of waterfall, which is a slightly off-white shade, and I'll be pressing that over the top just to kind of mute it a little bit. So it's there, but it also looks a little bit less obvious. Going back to the grey and blue tone mixed together, I'm taking this down the centre of the nose, either side of this kind of like cut line. And then I'm using what's left on the bristles to kind of enhance some of these squares that I've already done to deepen them. I will also be going back and forward over some of these squares because I want to add a bit of black to some of them just to create some depth because some of them will look deeper than others. And then I'm going over the actual crosses where they meet and deepen in this area because this is where the pins are going to sit and we want them to look a little bit darker. I'll also be re-enhancing some of these later, making them a little bit wider almost as if they slightly sink in. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, it's just to give you an idea, because once the pins are on, it really does bring the look together. When you have your reference image up, just kind of almost paint what you see. If you see yellow there, put yellow there. If it doesn't feel right, don't worry, the end result will come together. If you've seen my Superman look, you'll know what I mean. That was a kind of almost like cell shaded approach to creating the look. I painted the shadows that I saw and the end result was that Jack looked like Christopher Reeve as Superman. Even though you might not necessarily be able to see it as you're painting it, you need to just trust the process and it will come together. Here I'm just colouring in Jack's lips with some white cream which I used on the rest of the face. And then on the centre of the lips I'm taking the same blue that I've used around the eyes. This really does give the face a bit more of a dead appearance and it's so similar to Hellraiser. So now I'm going in with a deeper blue and then I'm going to mix a little bit of that with black and start applying that again over the eyes. And as you can see having this kind of mottled effect to the paintwork on the eyes actually works in our favour for this particular look create depth on the very inner corner of the eyes with a bit more of the black tone and then here I'm using a flattened pencil brush to press that into the skin and this is creating a bit more of a shaded appearance. I'm doing the same underneath the bottom lip, mixing together the blue and the grey tone. It's creating shadow but also keeping the skin quite cool and also around the nostrils. I'm extending the shape of the eyebrows at the front and I'm using a flat shader brush to do this. And then I'm adding shade into the sides of the nose, again using the grey and blue tones to do this. This is the part I like because you can really start to see it come together. It's got a real 80s feel to it. For our pins we used cocktail straws. And I must say they're quite difficult to get hold of, especially now single use plastic is being phased out. To get a flat surface to the pin we warmed it up over a candle and then pressed it down onto a hard surface. And this gave us a nice hard top. 
to adhere these to the skin, I started off with the Ripper FX Spirit Gum, which I got from the Makeup Armory. And if we had time to wait for it to go off, I think this would have been the most ideal glue for us to use, but we genuinely struggled to get these to stay in place for ages. Me, Tommy and Jack were using our hands to catch all the different pins that kept falling, so in the end I used Sculpt Gel. Afterwards, we thought that the best idea would have been to buy tiny magnets and then use the spirit gum to glue one part of the magnet to the face and then the other half to the cocktail straw and that would have been the most ideal way to secure these to the face. We waited for the sculpt gel to go off and then it worked better for securing it to the face but I definitely say if you're going to do this look get the magnets because that's going to be the most secure way to keep them on. So although this was a little bit challenging with the pins, I really, really enjoyed doing this transformation. I hope you love it. There is a reboot of this film coming out, so I thought it was a good time to finally do this one for Halloween. If you feel comfortable with it, pop in some black Scalera lenses which cover the entire eye and you are good to go. I will list and link the products I've used in the description bar. Please subscribe if you're new to my channel. Don't forget to follow me outside of YouTube over on my social handles which will be on screen for you now and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.